silly to have talked about the wrestling scene. I'm curious yeah. to touch that. Oh, that was so much fun. It was, uh, I was sore after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it fun fake wrestling? Yeah, it's fun fake wrestling Corey. He's a, a big guy. I'm like, oh, this will be easy. But not, it's not easy. <laughs> well, you, you got an entire fan, screen family uh, and four siblings. Uh, I mean, how, how do you sort of fraternalize yourselves? Is there, uh, is there anything involved in, in, in developing a bond, that, that convincing bond on screen? Well, I, I think it's, you know, it really started with the, with the script and with the book. It's, it's, it's so clearly written who these characters are and what their relationship is to each other and to the parents. Um, and that's, that's really 90% of, of the battle when you, you, know, you have a sort of a clear roadmap. Um, and, and I think just in terms of getting to know each other, um, you know, we, we didn't, the way, the way the set was, was organized, it was pretty far away from from base camp and you know there was too much traffic to be going back and forth between setups so we really just stayed on set all we day long <laughs> uh, yeah we were stuck together and um, and I, and you know luckily it happened to be some of the coolest people ever assembled in a, in a house so I mean the, the essence of family is essentially claustrophobia <laughs> well, yeah, you. I mean, there's some. There's certainly something to being stuck with people that you don't necessarily have a choice uh, about, and sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not good, you know. And I think it all worked its way into the movie. There's also like a, I feel like a mutual respect for everyone that was involved, a cast, you know. If there was one person that there that was kind of not as generous or not as uh, present as uh, they could have been, it would have been a completely different dynamic. But like Jane Fonda, who's like you know um, couldn't have more impressive life and uh, career you know, could not be a more approachable person and it was like that with everyone she, she kind of led the charge I think with with uh, all of it her and Tina and, and Jason just making it very much a, a you know, safe place to fail I think for everyone and Sean is the most indefatigable uh, presence on set I mean he just every day just so it's so positive it's uh, he, he was a great leader Adam is a fun playing an asshole <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> and, you know, a lot of, uh, it's a serious question actually it didn't sound like it but a lot of actors say it's more fun being a villain that you can kind of like really you know bring it on but is there a particular well, I don't really thing? think of him as a villain or an no, asshole I mean, I don't, oh, an I, yeah I don't, I don't think of him <laughs> I don't think he thinks of himself as a I think he's like someone who comes back and is like uh, is this the youngest of older siblings and is used to having adult conversations that probably were a little bit more too you know, too mature for his age you know I think his mom probably like uh, the rules start to get less and less with each child and suddenly there's resentment with the oldest who was, he didn't get the same amount of rules that, that, that this one did and so he's used to being a performer to try to get attention from these you know adults you know and then he leaves and he comes back and desperately tries to get people to see them uh, uh, see him as someone who's grown and is different and has he's mature and has these great clothes and has this beautiful you know intelligent older uh, girlfriend uh, fiance you know however he decides to present it I guess so I, I don't th I don't think he's an asshole I just think he's uh, you know that's uh, that's just who he is. This is it's his it's his character. He's on he's on a performer. I guess. Goal wise, Philip seems to have a, ten a tension deficit. I mean, obviously that's what part of the plot and why you guys are diametrically opposed. Uh, there was a profile of you in GQ where you t uh, that paints you as completely opposite of him. Like uh, that said that you made a, made a lot of people cry in Juilliard for not being committed enough. Um, <laughs> that's stu that stuck in my head, and also. Uh, yeah, just the, the idea being that you are like uber committed to everything you do. Well, that was a different time in my life when I had just come out of the military. So then I was very like uh, 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 readjusting to being a civilian again. You know, I think of being in the military, believe it or not, is very different from being in acting school. And <laughs> it's, really funny, it's really funny too because I, I think when, you know, I went to acting school too, and and you, you start you 
think you, you like a lot of times people call it like boot camp for actors, but it's I'm no, sure it's, it's not. nothing. <laughs> like that. Not at all. But, but I, I so I had I think there was a, a specific time in my life that uh, sure I took good through with any organization. There was good things and bad things and. Um, with the military, I, I very much knew at an early age. I grew up very, you know, fast in a way that suddenly you were responsible for things that you just didn't uh, aren't typical for eighteen or nineteen year olds, uh, uh, other people's lives and things like that. And it just ages you, I think, in a way that when you get out or when you have your civilian life again, or you know, you want to do things with it that you didn't uh, that were uh, you took for granted. I think and. Um, you know, the military, I loved being in it, but when I got my freedom and to be a civilian again, and I was interested in pursuing acting, there were, you know, I had tunnel vision, but it, there was a big, uh, oh, these are all for me, <laughs> uh, learning curve of like how to adjust to being a civilian again, and, and it's not appropriate to yell people like that, and uh, people are people, and you know, that can't, I can't uh, force my, you know, Way of military thinking on them, and I mean, there was a lot of things going on there. I think yeah. I'm more uh, better adjusted to now. I think. He did. He did. He never yelled at me. <laughs> did you understand Philip, like the the you know directionlessness? Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a you know, uh, uh, may, well, maybe not universal for everyone, but for me, sure, I know what it's like to not to uh, know where you're doing. I, I also understand the whole. You know, you leave, I mean, similar to the military, you leave, you grow up into a different person or, and you've experienced these things that obviously people weren't with you when you experienced them and you come back and you want people to view you differently and uh, acknowledge this this man you've become and when they don't or, you know, be a civilian, suddenly you have, uh, you have rank and you're used to a certain level of respect, you know, you're a Lance Corporal, then you come into, you know, you go to a Starbucks and someone who probably went to college and you're jealous that you didn't go to college is telling you to move, you know, and suddenly you're like irrationally angry about, like, you don't know who I am, you know, like I was in, I was a Lance Corporal, it means nothing, you know, like that, that, that kind of dynamic is, is uh, I think, really relatable, or was relatable for me, mm -hmm. I understand him. I'm just circle just back to, Corey, what you were talking about working with Sean being kind of this, uh, you know, inflatable pr presence on the set, what was it like working with him, I mean, he's more used to you know, family entertainment, not these kind of large ensemble mm -hmm. adult dramas. Um, and this is kind of a transition for him. It, you know, it was a really great thing to see all around on set is you saw people working in ways that they hadn't necessarily worked before, but knew they had, had it was a it was a part of themselves that they hadn't really shown before. For, for myself, I haven't done much comedy. And so it was, it was, you know, and, 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 you know, to go from not doing much comedy to doing a, a comedy with Tina Fey and Jason Bateman, you know, it was a good, it's a good, good, good way to go. Um, and for, um, and, and even, and, 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 and Jane Fonda, uh, I, I remember at our first read throughs, we was just looking around, uh, the table with just wonder. It's like I can't keep up with you guys. You're so <laughs> funny, but she totally could. She was, you know, um, and and I think the the person who was who was most excited was was Sean. I mean, I think he. This is a, a, a part of himself that he's known that that is that that, that he can that he has something to say and and. Um, I think he. I think he. He loves doing the the, the type of the family comedies that that that, that he's been doing, um, but you could tell there was a particular excitement and a, a, a sense that uh, he wanted to show that that he, that he can that he can create a nuanced, uh, you know, mm -hmm. intelligent uh, story, and, and so that was. And I think everybody got a sense of that, that, that this was, um, you know, I, 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 I don't know, you know, I, I, I know the, 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 the movie was, was a lot cheaper than, um, than, it, than that it would have been, you know, to 10, 15 years ago when they used to make, um, you know, movies that weren't horror movies or, or superhero movies. Um, 
and everybody was sort of doing it for for the love of it, and and Sean was the the the, the best example of that. You both have TV series. Uh, how did those fit in with what you were doing? I mean, did the strain happen after your shooting? Yeah. Uh, Yes, I, I yeah I hadn't shot it. I'd been I knew I was going to do it, but I hadn't shot anything yet. More of a, a time uh, issue, I guess. Yeah, I was doing girls while we were doing uh, this movie. They uh, w w doing more of this where they do. So they actually like um, uh, Sean made it all work because it wasn't working because of scheduling, and uh, Sean called uh, Jason and Tina and asked if they would be willing to shoot on the weekends to accommodate the schedule shift and they said yes they, that they would and it was uh, for me that was like that was a huge uh, thing I was very moved by being able to make it work and there's the two things going on at the same time so it was a lot but you was know it a big gear shift going from Adam to uh I won't, I won't call him an asshole either, really. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yes, in that it was a, a, a lot to do, but again, I love both of those people, and this group, it, like, you could, I can't wait, really, to show up to work, so it doesn't, like, um, I don't think anyone's really interested in playing characters that are well-fed and well-rested anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for one more question. Was there any one person who kept everyone laughing between takes? Mm, ben yeah, Ben Schwartz is a pretty Schwartz. funny motherfucker. <laughs> oh, every, everyone was so... Yeah, every, yeah. There wasn't one particular, but Ben Schwartz pretty, was, was pretty hilarious. I mean, he's, he's quick. He is really funny. And, I, and, and, you know, hopefully some of that stuff will make it onto the, uh, the, the DVD extras. Cause, <laughs> you, you know, because it was, it was, de it was de like when he would, when he would start, it would, it was, you know, Sean sort of shifted it's into a different yeah. mode and it was just like, you know, it was like three lines and suddenly, <laughs> you know, the, the takes are like, you know, 15 minutes long and just <laughs> throwing out alt after alt after alt. We, did, we didn't really get to ask the question we're allowed, so, and I, and I want to conclude both of you uh, because of Ant-Man as well. So, uh, is there anything in acting school that has prepared you for this? What has the situation been like? Uh, in, in, in words you can you are allowed to say I know that. <laughs> sure yeah I, I think acting school totally prepare I mean everything prepares you for everything not just acting school uh, uh, yeah, the Star Wars is a, a big um, thing uh, Ant-Man is a big thing it's uh, all huge scales are bigger than probably some things we worked on but I think because of the I can't speak for Ant-Man but I know for Star Wars what J.J. and Larry Kazan have written and what the, this I, the way they decided to approach the project is very much uh, how you approach it. They break, you know, the, from the very beginning. It's all about story and character and, and effects and you know the spectacle. As I think in the, the originals were kind of not, they're not take a back seat because it's very much part of the story. But you know the story dictates that as a, a, a as opposed to vice versa. So then it, then it turns out oh this is really yes this uh, a long time ago in a galaxy far away. But at the same time it's it's moments it's about you know loss and friendship and those universal themes that made the original movies I think so uh, have such a long life and you know so resonant you know. Uh, and I think it's the same. It's all just playing this moment, then the next moment, and then hopefully at the end we'll have you know uh, a movie. Yeah, and I think and I, and I think uh, acting school prepared me in the sense that it, it 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 taught me to never see myself as above the material. You know, I think that's that's you know it's it, it can be easy to sort of say, well, this is this supernatural or you know uh, you know fantasy sort of world and so I don't need to take it as seriously um, but uh, I've had more conversations um, uh, with Peyton uh, Reed the director of Ant-Man you know but you're talking about script talking about character than almost any independent movie <laughs> little independent yeah. movie I've done um, it, it's uh, you know, they're at the core. They're human beings. You know, dealing with maybe slightly, you know, maybe more extraordinary circumstances. Um, but uh, that's that's what people come to the theaters for to to, to see those human interactions. Um, at least we'd like to. Yeah, <laughs> I think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well played. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.